Today, Apple announced a new phone. It's a new version of the iPhone SE, which basically crams an iPhone 11 into the body of an iPhone 8. For this new iPhone, Apple basically took the iPhone SE recipe from 2016 and revamped it for 2020. And the first ingredient on that list is affordability. The original one cost $399 and the new one costs $399. That gets you a 64 gigabyte bottle. For $50 more, you can upgrade to 128 gigabytes or you can pay $549 and get a 256 gigabyte model. Now compare that to the iPhone 11 that starts at $649 or the iPhone 11 Pro that starts at $999. The $399 price puts this phone right into the budget phone category. This means it rivals other phones like the Moto G7, which could be had for around $300, the upcoming Moto G Stylus and Moto G Power, but also phones like the year-old Google Pixel 3a. Hey, the next part of the iPhone SE recipe is compact size. The original iPhone SE had the body of an iPhone 5 or 5S, and you have to remember this came out during the time when the 6 and 6S were already out, and yet it showed Apple that a lot of people still wanted a small phone, and that four inch screen that had been around for a couple years. Now some people, uh, including myself, were kind of hoping that Apple might bring back that form factor of the original iPhone SE, or, or maybe a variation of it, but yeah, they didn't. Instead, they used the 4.7 inch form factor from phones like the iPhone 6, 6S, 7, and iPhone 8. It's definitely thinner, but it's definitely taller and a little bit wider. But it gets interesting when you start comparing it to the other phones in Apple's lineup, like the iPhone 11 and its 6.1 inch screen. It's just ginormous, and it's like a lot thinner than the iPhone 11. And when you look at it this way, the new iPhone SE is literally a compromise between the iPhone 11 and the iPhone SE original. I don't know if that'll be enough though to sway people who really want a small iPhone. I mean, maybe it will, maybe, I don't know. Okay, so one thing is kind of underappreciated about this new iPhone SE, I, at least I think there's no notch. There's no ugly notch, and that's because this doesn't have Face ID. Instead, it uses Touch ID and that haptic button on the bottom. So if you're not a fan of Face ID, this could be for you. If you're not a fan of the notch, this definitely is for you. The next ingredient that Apple copied from the original iPhone SE recipe is making smart feature compromises. Look, there's just no way you're gonna take all the features of an iPhone 11 that costs $650 and put them into a smaller body and charge $400. That's just not gonna happen. In fact, the original iPhone SE had many of the same features as the iPhone 6 and 6S, but it didn't have all of them. It had like the camera and the processor. So what do we get in this new iPhone SE? Well, we get the A13 Bionic chip, we get a True Tone display, we get wireless charging. It's also, we get fast charging. You, you gotta pay extra for the fast charger. You also get a phone that's rated IP67 for water and dust resistance, meaning it could be submerged under one meter of water for 30 minutes. I think those are some pretty good features. Now, you won't be getting the double or triple rear cameras found in Apple's flagship phones. However, you get a single rear camera that has most of the features like smart HDR and portrait mode photos and cinematic stabilization, the ability to shoot 4K video at 60 frames per second and uh, extended dynamic range video up to 30 frames per second. That's pretty amazing. So what's on the back of this phone? It's got a 12 megapixel camera that has a 28 millimeter f1.8 lens. Compare that to the 26 millimeter f1.8 lens that's found on the main camera on the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max. You're also not going to get night mode, which I didn't see it listed in the press release, so I'm assuming it's not there. And you're not getting that ultra wide camera that a lot of people like in the new iPhones. But again, for $399, I think those are smart compromises. When we look at the new iPhone SE and all the ingredients it's borrowed from the original iPhone SE, I think it lines up pretty well. I think it's a good 2020 version of an iPhone SE, at least on paper. So should you pre-order one? Well, that's complicated. And I say that because I haven't tested the new iPhone SE yet. That said, if you're still rocking an original iPhone SE, 
and you're okay with a tiny increase in size, a ginormous increase in features, functionality, and feature-proofing, and a no increase in price, then yeah, you should definitely consider upgrading. And for those of you who are mulling whether or not to buy an iPhone 11, but maybe you wanted one at a lower price or one that's a little bit smaller, yeah, you should definitely consider the new iPhone SE. If you're looking to learn more about the new iPhone SE, check out our coverage on CNET.com. But you know what? I, I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think of this new phone? Is it all you'd hoped for? Did you want a feature that they didn't add? And if you're a fan of small phones, is this small enough for you? You know what, throw your responses in the comments.